Hello, my name is Kain Tun. I'm a researcher in the field of software engineering specializing in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Today we are going to be discussing dimensionality reduction and in doing that we are going to be looking at principal components analysis. Today we are going to discuss uh, the, the, the concept of dynamic uh, dimensionality reduction we are also going to look at the method of dimensionality reduction, but we are going to spend more time on our principal component analysis techniques. Of course, we are going to actually go to our studio to perform uh, um, principal component analysis using a sample data that has been provided. And then we are going to view the plots and then make some explanation. All right, let's get started. Now, what is dimensionality reduction? Dimensionality reduction has to do with is the process of reducing the number of random uh, variables under consideration by obtaining a set of principal values of principal components. There are two. It's a way to view a linear classification model. So. Uh, dimensionality reduction can either be feature selection or feature extraction. I'm going to explain more in the next two slides. Feature selection finds a subset of the original variables. Feature extraction transforms the data from a higher dimension to a fewer dimension. So what it means, you have a set of data of 1000 rows. Then you have 20 columns. And these 20 columns are features of each of the of the uh, uh, the data in the rows. Let's take for instance the first row may have a cat with a name. Then you have features like color. We have the owner. We have the the weight. We have other features. So dimensionality reduction reduces this data in higher dimensional space into fewer dimension by extracting the most important features. So dimensionality reduction is called variance maximizing methods. We are trying to find out the features that actually adds to the most uh, significant variance in the data. Algorithms for dimensionality re reduction, there are four of them I mentioned here. We have the principal component analysis, which is the most important, the most common, which actually has to do with reducing a high dimensional observation into fewer dimensions. And this is very important for data visualization because we can only view or visualize data in either 2D or 3D. But when data is in higher dimensions, for instance, data is in a just as a if it's in a higher dimension, let's say 20D, how do we visualize it? So that's where dimensionality reduction comes in. We also have multi-dimensional scaling. Is another method, another algorithm for dimensionality reduction? In this case, uh, it, it's it's have a limitation of PC uh, limitations like PCA because it's limited somehow uh, in linearity. We have factor analysis, we have independent component analysis. So let's focus on principal component analysis. Take note of these three points. Uh, it approximates giving high dimensional data to a low dimensional data. Take note, it doesn't truncate the data, but it transforms the view it transforms the, the plane, the, the view of this data to a lower dimension. All right. Although there will be a, a little losses, but the key features of the data is going to remain the same. PCA is the most, com uh, most popular dimensionality reduction technique. Then it performs a linear mapping. Yeah, that is an important point I wanted to highlight. It performs a linear mapping of data to lower dimensional space in such a way that variance of the data is maximized. So how PCA works? I'm going to explain how it works now. Let's assume that we have uh, we have data 
we have we have a let's just say v1 d2 d3 d4 okay and then you have um, let's say f1 for feature f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 and so on so when you actually plot this data now this data is not in two dimensions for sure because these are five features so how do you extract the feature that adds most to this to the variance in this data features that contribute uh, most to the variance so we are going to use PCA to extract these features so how do we actually do this and that is what we are going to do we are going to perform this using R studio so if you don't have R please download it is a free tool uh, that is normally used for data analysis is an open source programming language and for statistical computing and graphics that is supported by the R Foundation for statistical computing. So I'm going to go out there to my system so that we can perform a PCA using R. Now data has been provided. A little about this data we have one two three four five features and we have 150 let me set my pen okay taking time okay so we have a set of features and we have 150 data points so we are now going to use good so let's go ahead to open the R Studio so that we visualize our data. So it takes a while to open. So the point we are making is that this data you see here that has how many features? One, two, three, four, five. We are going to extract the features that contribute most to the variance in data and those features is what is called the principal component okay uh, hold on okay so I'm going to go to programs So when you install it, you will see this R here. You also see R Studio. So I'm going to be using any of these depending on my operating system. So the first thing I'm going to do is to is to view the data, and that I can do by typing Iris. Iris is the name of the data set. If I type Iris, I can see the data. So you have the the length, the width, the petal the length, the, the separate length, separate width, and the petal length and petal width, as you can see. So we can now remove this species because we don't need it. So what we are going to do next is to enter the command to remove the species. I would like you to also follow along in this tutorial. So we just say I iris PCA okay 
so we have the command that says iris and then minus 5 means remove the fifth column and everything works fine so if we if we now enter the next command which helps us to see the summary okay so okay sorry we have summary iris pca summary iris pca the first command created this variable iris pca and stored this and not this iris without the last column the last column has been removed and the result is stored in iris pca all right so at this point we have about four different components we have the first one we have the second one so the explanation goes that from the output we see that 92.4 of the variation in the data set is explained by the first component okay and and 97.8 is explained by the second component so as you can see the cumulative proportion of the first two but that is not all let's go ahead to view the loadings although it may not be that important but we can go ahead to view it so to do that we simply enter the command that says iris pca loadings um, I might have to give you this presentation if you want you can just request tell me in the comment that you need this presentation I'll send it to you so I, I think I made a mistake. Iris P C A loadings. Okay, so the, the question. Okay, so you see the uh, Iris P C A, and then you have this dollar sign before. Okay, so Iris PCA, then you have dollar sign. Okay, so you can see. So the loadings are is actually correspond the eigenvalues that correspond to each of the eigenvectors for the matrix that was created by the original data. Alright, so the next thing we are going to do is to now plot to view the component that has the most effect on on the on the variance on the variance of data so we are going to just say screen plots iris pca uh, screen plots iris PCA screen plot iris PCA hold on I think I've missed out something okay I, I think I should also a second iris PCA of course Okay, so um, say screen plot is not there. Why screen plots? Okay, so I'll use a function that just plots iris pca okay perfect so the function plot is actually the one that works all right so this is principal component analysis in action we have four components and from here you can see that among the four uh, uh, features of the original data you see that just the first component 
is enough to explain the variance in the data. So using this, we can easily uh, try to derive deductions or find deductions from the original data using just the first uh, component or we can even take the first two components. So this is how principal component analysis works. Uh, if you want, you can go to uh, continue in the presentation where I performed PCA on a real data that helps us to actually explain the data. So this I'm going to give you if you request by leaving a comment below telling me you want this presentation. I'm going to give it to you. I'd like to thank you for viewing and also subscribe. Click on the subscribe button down there if you have not done so. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me anytime.